Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Care and Bridging Pastor Dan Slagle and Executive Pastor Brian McGowan. And you might be asking yourself, why am I not here with Pastor Ken Worlon? And so in case you weren't here and missed the announcements this morning, we're just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Uh, Brian, yeah. can you give us an update on Pastor Ken? So this past Thursday, for those of you that didn't receive the uh, update via email or Facebook, uh, Ken had emergency heart surgery where he had um, an artery that was 99% uh, blocked cleared and put a stent in and thankfully um, the surgery was a tremendous success and so we're all praising God for that that he's home Friday afternoon doing well I saw him on Saturday uh, and he said he had the best sleep he's had in uh, 10 years and so we're praising God for for that good news that's such good yeah. news and so um, what does that mean for Faith Bridge just in terms of him taking some time off what will that look like well one of the blessings of having a large and gifted staff is that there are any number of people who can pick up and, and carry on. Ken is going to take uh, an adequate amount of time to fully recuperate. Doctors are uh, being pretty adamant that he get the appropriate amount of rest that he needs. But uh, our preaching plan has been in place for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And our preaching team will just keep moving things forward and the church will just keep moving forward. Uh, I think it's a testimony to Ken's leadership that even when he's not here, things keep moving as they should. Great. Yeah. Awesome. And thank you guys for all your prayers and concern for Pastor Ken. And so let's talk a little bit about the sermon today mm -hmm. that we were yeah. blessed to be able to hear thanks to the video and um, his preview. Um, just some practical questions for you. Um, when you look at your finances, what are some practical steps that you can begin to, um, to get some breathing room yeah. in your life? Uh, I think probably the first thing is to first take an assessment of your finances. A lot of people uh, kind of had an idea of how, how much they make, but they have no idea of how much they spend. And then they sort of look up and they realize, wow, we're in debt. And so I think uh, my first piece of advice would be to get uh, a piece of software, whether it's mint.com or QuickBooks or something, where you actually can have your hands on the financial throttles of your world. You see how much you make, you see how much there's going out. And at the end of the day, you can see if you're spending more than you're making or spending less than you're making. And I think that's then and only then can you really understand um, what your situation is and, and then make adjustments mm. to give yourself breathing room. Um, you know, I think when you do that, whether it's the husband or the wife that's in control of the finances, meaning they're the one who's writing all the checks, paying all the bills, um, when the couple can come together, uh, then I think that gives the family breathing room. And because when we're in debt, it's stressful. Not only do the husband and wife feel it, but I, I guarantee the kids will feel it as well, even if they don't exactly know what it is. They'll feel the stress. And um, I mean, we hear over and over that the number one um, reason for divorce and for major, major fights in marriage is over money. And so if you can get your mind around what it is um, that's coming in and going out, uh, I think that's probably the most practical thing. And then don't just look at it during tax season but look at it weekly, monthly, quarterly, and make adjustments. Mm -hmm. It might be that your car broke down and your savings uh, you know, is, is had to go to pay for that, and so you need to make adjustments in the next couple of months to sort of build that back up. Um, and it's a lot of work. I think for many, it's like working out. You know, on January 1st, you wanna work out, you wanna get in shape, you know, I think it's the same thing. By two weeks in, most people have not done it anymore. Back to yeah, old habits. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with money. I mean, for two weeks, three weeks, you're feeling good, you're shopping and you're paying attention all that, but come spring break, you've blown it. And um, I guess my word there is that it's never uh, too late to start. It's all, and, and, and you're going to blow it, but it's just kind of just keeping at it and keep going back to um, knowing that it's it's for good reason. It's it's not going to be easy, but it's it's for it's for glorifying God and for the good of your family. Yep, and a great place to start is with Financial Peace. That small group starts Tuesday night. Um, you can find out more about it at faithbridge.org slash FPU, and we would love to have you join us for that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking further into the five keys that mm -hmm. um, Pastor Ken preached on today, 
Um, one of the ones that stuck out to me was living joyfully where in God's provisions sure. um, and being content. Right. Um, can you speak to us a little bit about how that can look regardless of where you are in your financial story? Sure. No, the, the Bible is clear that contentment is not so much a matter of our circumstances, but the quality of our relationship with Christ. Uh, circumstances are going to change sometimes uh, on an hourly basis. Uh, and if we live according to our circumstances, our moods and our stress levels are going to be up and down all over the map. But if the quality of our relationship with Christ is constant, then true contentment is possible because He is constant. He does not change. Uh, scripture doesn't call Him the Prince of Peace simply because it's a nice title, but He really does bring peace into our lives and an ability to be joyful and thankful under even the most difficult of circumstances. So the key for the believer, I think, is to take our eyes off of whatever our situation may be, focus on our walk with Christ, our relationship with Him, and then all the rest of it really can take on a completely different perspective in light of who He is and what He brings to our lives. Great. Awesome. And I'm certainly grateful for the leadership that both of you provide. So thank you for being here with us today. And thank you for joining us for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.